In this video, I'm going to go over the integration of a MoTeC CAN keypad with an M1 series ECU using one of my software packages. I've recently completed an update of the software which expands the keypad support. One big advantage in using a CAN keypad is just how easy it is to integrate them into your project. There's a couple different versions as you can see here. There's the 15 button and then there's the 8 button. They're very easy to wire in if you've never seen one before. They just have four wires on the back, power ground, can high, and can low. If your ECU is tight on inputs, this can obviously be a lifesaver. Um, with the software, this keypad can do multiple different switch functions. We can do simple on and off toggle. We can do momentary on and off. And then we can also do multi-position uh, switching functions, which would replace something like uh, a driver pot or similar uh, multi-position switch. Next, we'll move on to the software behind this, and uh, I'll give you a bit more of a tour. And here we'll take a look at the software I've written to support the CAN keypad. This particular software package we're looking at is my Universal Motorsport package, which is simply Motex GPR package that I've added quite a few things to, uh, the keypad support just being uh, one of those things. As you can see here, we now have a Motec keypad group, uh, which is found in the main driver switch group. If any of you have used GPR or one of the GPR-based packages, um, that'll look quite familiar to you. This keypad support will be added to my vehicle specific packages as I go around and update them um, probably between now and the end of the year. So I'm just going to take each of these items uh, from the top down, the parameters you set up to use this keypad, and then we'll go through linking the keypad to some of the driver switch functions that are built into the software to control different things like anti-lag, launch control, traction control, things like that. First up is CAN bus. This is where you simply select which CAN bus the keypad is wired to. Transmit, enable, and disable. This allows you to turn on and off the messages being sent from the M1 ECU to the keypad. Uh, these messages wake the keypad up and then also control the backlight and LED functionality on the keypad. This needs to be enabled if you have just a keypad and an M1 ECU or the keypad will not function. If you happen to have a PDM or MoTeC Dash in the system and one of those devices is sending uh, messages to the keypad, then you would disable the M1 transmit and let the other device um, send those messages and control the LEDs on the keypad. If this is disabled, however, you can still receive the keypad button press messages in the M1 and use them for whatever you want. Um, just any light control will be done by the other device. We have a diagnostic channel. OK means that valid keypad messages are being received. We have a brightness group. We can set the brightness in percent of the keypad backlighting and then also the brightness of the LED indicators that are on each button. Then we have 15 switch groups and they simply correspond one to each button on a keypad. If you're using a eight button keypad, then you would just use switches one through eight and the rest would just be ignored. These all contain the exact same setup information, so we'll just take the top one here and go through it. When you look at the switch group, on the actual group, you'll see a channel here and it says zero. That's the actual switch position um, that's been generated by the software. And we'll go over that more as we proceed. We have different switch types that we can select. The keypad by design is just a momentary type keypad. 
And so when type is set to normal, that means our switch function in the M1 is going to simply follow what the keypad does. If you look down here, we have an input channel. The input channel is the raw value coming from the keypad. And then we use the software to translate that into a switch position. So when it's set to normal, this will just be a momentary switch. So I'm going to press it. And you see the input change to on and switch one change to one. I release it. Switch one changes back to zero as the input changes to off. So it just follows the button press as you can see. The next type is latched. This is going to take the change of state on the input it'll change the switch value and then it'll latch it there until it sees the input change state again. So as you can see our switch is zero and our input is off. So I'm going to go ahead and press the keypad button. You see the input change to on and switch change to one. I release the button. Input changes to off but switch one stays at position one. So it's just latched there. And then I'm going to press it again. You see the input go on. I release it. Input's off. Switch one stays at zero. This is probably the most common um, type of switch you're going to use. Not many things in the M1 use a momentary type switch. So we would set it to latched and this would generate an on and an off signal or a zero and one to turn functions on and off such as anti-lag on and off, traction control on and off, um, launch control on and off, things like that. The last type we have is counter. This one is fairly simple. Every time you press the button, it will count up to a value of whatever's set in maximum. So we're going to set a value of three. And so right now we're switch position zero, input is off. I'm going to press the button once. You see the input go on and off. Switch change to 1. I'm going to press it again. Switch change to 2. Again, switch changes to 3. And again, back to 0. You can set the maximum up to a max of 9. And so you just really set the counter maximum to whatever you need for your particular function. It will continue to cycle from 0 to maximum as you press the button. We have a value storage parameter. You can set this to volatile, which means when the ECU is turned off, whatever setting the counter was at will be lost, and when the ECU turns back on, it will start again at zero. Or you can set that to flashbacked, meaning it will save the value of the switch when you turn the ECU off as long as you've wired in correctly your battery backup circuit on the M1 ECU. Next I will show you how to integrate this switch into one of these driver switch functions. We're just going to grab analog right at the top and what we're going to do is we're going to use a single button to both turn the anti-lag on and off and select between the three different anti-lag maps. So first up we'll grab anti-lag switch. This is the on and off part of the anti-lag system. We have to assign an index so we link it to the keypad switch that we want to use to control this function. So we're going to scroll down and we're going to use keypad switch 1. And then we have to set up the mapping of the switch. So we tell the M1 what switch positions go to which um, state, basically, in this one. I like for zero to be off. And so we're going to link the zero position. We're going to leave that off. And then we'll move. Remember, our counter goes from zero to three. So we have to deal with all of those positions. So we're going to set position 1 to on, position 2 to on, and position 3 to on. The reason we're going to do that is we're going to use three different maps on the anti-lag system, and we want, of course, the anti-lag to be on for all three of those map positions. 
So now we have this set up. I'm going to press through the switch. You'll see the position change to 1. Anti-lag goes to on. Position 2, anti-lag is on still. 3, anti-lag is on. 0, anti-lag system is off. So now we're turning our system on and off how we want. Now we need to set up the anti-lag mode switch, which is the switch function that will actually just toggle it through the three available anti-lag maps. We're going to select our index. We're going to link it to the same keypad switch, driver keypad switch 1. And then we're going to set up the mapping of this one as well. If you look, there's maps A, B, and C. And we're going to set up position 0, 1, 2, 3 on our counter. If you remember, position 0 is off, so anti like system is off. So no matter, it doesn't really matter what map we set for this one, but I just leave it at A because it's easier. Position 1 we're going to set also to map A. That will be our first anti-lag on position, and we're going to use map A for that one. Position 2 we're going to set to map B. Position 3 we're going to set to map C. I'll minimize that. So now you can see our analog switch, our analog mode switch with the map position, and then here you can actually see the value coming from our keypad switch counter. I'm going to go ahead and press it once. You see position change to 1, our anti-lag switch is on, and we're on map A. I'll press it again, position 2, we're on map B, and of course our anti-lag is still on. Position 3 is map C, anti-lag still on. Back to 0, it goes back to map A, but the anti-lag system also turned off. So as you can see, it's quite easy to link the keypad buttons to any of these functions um, that you see here in this list. There's also other driver switch functions that are scattered throughout the software for various things like turning fuel pumps on and off, um, cooling fans, um, just a lot of different things that you can link the keypad to. Um, and as you can see it's very easy to set up both the keypad itself to do what you want and then um, yeah, linking it to multiple functions. You can really link a button to as many things as you want, um, but yeah, there's realistically only so many items you can control um, correctly with one button. Next, I will show you how the LED function on the keypad gives you some visual feedback as to where we're at with the keypad positions, like the counter and on and off and things like that. Okay, here we are back at our keypad. I'm just going to show you really quickly um, how the LEDs um, give feedback as to what's actually going on in the software. Um, what's nice about this is if you simply have an M1 ECU and a keypad in your vehicle um, without any other external um, displays of any kind, you can kind of know what's going on. You know what position you're in on the counter um, and things like that. First, we're going to do a normal type switch, which if you remember right is just a momentary so if you press this and release it, as you can see, each time I press it, the green comes on, I release it, it's off, because that's just a momentary type switch. I'm going to switch it to latched type, and then I'll press it again, and as you can see, the green has stayed on to indicate that the switch um, stayed in the latched on position. Press it again, and the LED is off. Now I'm going to move to the counter position. This one gets a little busier. Um, we're going to use all three LEDs um, with this one to give you an indication of what's going on. Right now the counter is in the zero position, and as you can see there's no LEDs on. Um, so that indicates um, basically that everything's off. That's why I like to assign um, the zero position to be off. I'm going to press it once. As you can see, the green one came on and stayed on. That indicates that we've switched to position one. Um, the middle one, which is the amber, blinked once. Um, my finger may have been in the way, but it blinks once to indicate that we're now in position one. 
And then the far right button, which is the red one, simply comes on to show you that, hey, you've pressed a button. So each time you press the button, you'll get feedback on the red one just showing you that the button's been pressed. So I'm going to press it again. I'm going to try and stay out of the way so you can see what those other two LEDs are doing. There you see the red one and then a count of two on the amber. So now we're in position two. I'm going to press it again. One, two, three. We're in position three. The green one has stayed on because positions one, two, and three are all considered to be on. I'm going to press it once more. You saw the red button press signal. You did not see an amber because we're back to zero, so there's nothing to count, obviously. And the green turned off because we're back to zero. Those, um, the amber will work no matter what um, maximum you set on the counter. If you set it to nine, it will blink out nine times to indicate um, that you're in position nine. So it's just a quick way to uh, give you an idea what position you're on if you're using the counter to maybe select boost maps or like we saw in our example anti-lag maps, um, throttle maps, whatever you might be doing, traction control. Um, you can quickly see what position you're in um, without having a MoTeC dash or any other kind of display. Thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful. Um, if you have any questions about this package or the keypad integration, um, please get in touch. Uh, email johnreedracing at gmail.com. Thank you.